let's go. <laughs> Do it. Okay, so uh, this so this is just a working meeting, guys. So let's let's not have any. There's no real formality here. We can just talk. Um, what a time. Uh, we so this is all uh, this is all virtual, and it will probably be virtual for the, the foreseeable future, um, which is fine. Uh, Amy, you had some questions about whether you know how do we keep on the up and up and in and in compliance with sunshine laws and all that stuff. And um, I just wanted to make sure that on the record, I did the research. So the <laughs> attorney, the attorney general of Montana has issued an opinion that says that basically these kinds of meetings are um and as long as we're under any kind of disaster or you know social distancing regulations and all that stuff well or advisements from the governor or orders that this is the this is a perfectly acceptable way to meet and um and it's it's the only way for us to meet so um that's what we're going to do from now on um uh, and I'm, I'm amazed and, and excited about us being able to pull this off uh, so quickly. Um, I think in terms of our, uh, our agenda for today, um, if you recall, we had put together a draft, like just before the um, social distancing kind of blew up and all the, the meetings got canceled, we had put together a draft of uh, the sort of our project plan and what we had slated for our March working group meeting was a discussion about what kind of input we wanted to give to the um, to Burton Planning Services mm. about the growth policy, um, which they are still working on uh, from the conservation board. That has already been done by a lot of the boards, but we uh, got formed kind of after the fact. And so we're, we're playing a little bit of catch up. Um, and so this meeting primarily is about uh, deciding what we think is useful input for, for them uh, coming from us. And then um, sort of secondary to that, which, which I put on the agenda was just modifying what our plan is going forward uh, because it's kind of, because some of the stuff got kind of blown up from the, yeah, uh, yeah. from canceling all the meetings. Um, so I thought that maybe we could work on a, just a, a document outlining, you know, what we, what input we wanted to give and then um, we could, we could post the document and then have a, have on our next meeting, just, just to follow sunshine law sort of compliance on our next meeting, we, uh, we go ahead and ratify the document and then just give me, uh, permission via some, you know, via vote, uh, to go ahead and forward, forward that input over to the Burton planning. But that gives, that gives what we review today, what we put together today, we gives the public a chance to kind of review what we're considering sending out. And then it also allows us to think about it a little bit more and then we can revisit it in our next meeting and then, and then send it out. Um, that sound, sound like an okay process for everybody? Yep. Yeah. Yes. Um, just a, it, a question, it, weren't, sorry, <laughs> I was just going to ask, um, a few of you had, uh, volunteered to work on this already. And I was wondering, I, I definitely understand that everything got crazy right after that meeting. So I was just wondering if anything came of that and what you guys came up with. And if you didn't come up with anything, no judgments, because I haven't um, done anything on my part. So <laughs> yeah, so the the meeting that we were supposed to have got canceled because, like, I think all the restaurants were pretty well. I don't know if they closed yet, but at least a lot of the stuff had started to go, and, and so we didn't end up meeting. So okay. I don't think I not, oh. not too much came out of that. I sent you what bills. Well, Bill took out of the, um, 
yeah so that was pretty much it i didn't even i so i meant to like do a good job of like getting a good draft started and everything but i have not been focused on that yeah i i would say don't worry about that i think we're doing a good job just having this yeah, I, think, yeah I, I think we're exactly i think we're doing great um <laughs> uh, I, I thought it would be fun i mean it's important to have the meeting we can decide uh uh what we're you know what our output really should be but you know i mean this let's just have a frank discussion and then we'll we'll go from there yeah lexi what's up oh i i read the growth policy and i took a lot of notes on things but like i think after our meeting um not i mean not the one that didn't happen um but yeah i wasn't included in any emails or anything and can someone add me to things <laughs> uh yeah lexi you are so you are on the board on the conservation board message board um, you can change your preferences so that you get every email, but your but the default preferences is, is that you only get special notices. Um, but I don't think there's really been anything. This is from our last meeting that you were at, and they a couple of people had we were doing smaller groups, but then you know life imploded as we know it. So um, I don't think. I don't think you really missed anything. Yeah, you're on the ground floor, Nothing right? Nothing happens. We literally yeah. haven't, we okay. haven't discussed anything. Um, uh, but this is the second time this has come up. So actually, this is important. I want to make sure that it's clear how to do things. So I'm going to share my screen. And I, I have to be, I have to remember to share just a window. Oh, give me just a second here. And I will share. So I just wanted to, because I wanted to show that. Um, so if I go to our home page, I'm going to hit share. Where is my share button? All right, Safari. Everybody see that? Yep. So if you go to government, city boards and committees, boards and committees. Somewhere in here is the City Conservation Board, which is right here. So down here it lists all the all the people that are here and everything. Um, let's see. Okay, so that's how to do remote participation. And oh man, we don't have it linked here yet. Well, that's too bad. There you go. Yeah, for the actual board. Yeah. So then the other, so then the one that uh, you, know, you can see all the things, all the ways, all the different things that I look at every day. Um, so if you go to, um, if we go to groups. Uh, dot io. Um, and you go log in. And there's a login here, which I can just autofill. Uh -oh. um, is that linked to the main page of our board? It isn't, which it should be by now. So I'll have to check with Faith and make sure that that gets done. Um, but if you go to the conservation board here, so these are all the meetings, all the all the notices that we've had. The ones with the, uh, the little, um, so you can you can just see kind of all of our discussions, and these are all up for you know public consumption. So here's one of them. But uh, uh, Lexi, down here at the bottom of my emails are links to the board website, the board documents. You can email the board and then you can subscribe to the thing. So the board, the board documents is the, that's the link to the public Google drive. It's read only unless you have, unless you've been given right access, which I think I might have to for you. And then there's a way to email the board, which is just this group. Sounds good. 
Yeah, I've never seen that before, but uh, I, I remember I signed up for something that you guys told me to, but I've never seen that. So I'm going to figure it out. Cool. I wonder if we can link that somewhere. Yeah, it should be on our website, but it's not. So we'll get that taken care of. Okay. So, um, yeah. So. On, the growth, on the growth policy, um, Jonathan attended the meeting where he uh, it said it's the top strategic plan 2020 work session. And it was a summary of the develop and adopt energy climate action plan. <laughs> that was one that was changed on the date. But uh, from the growth policy down at the bottom of that page, um, that's what he went to that meeting. I wondered if, if Jonathan had any comments about that meeting that he went to where he picked up this sheet. Um, I Yeah, that's what I think we spent a lot of time discussing that last, uh, the last meeting was the, that was the um, city council meeting where they were trying to decide what to tell us, to, like what to assign us. And so that, those notes that I, I think that what you're looking at is probably just the notes that um, I got from Melissa Newt um, on what the city was hoping for the city conservation board to do. Um, and she had some notes from the growth policy on there. I think that's what you're probably looking at. That's what, because I think that's how I would have um, sent that was after the last meeting. Well, I'm not. Um... Yeah, I, w I wondered about our making some observations on the um, plan because that was on the uh, agenda for the first thing. And uh, that, that was the sheet that you set out to everybody. If everybody did that, the two, the two pages, observations on results of Livingston Growth Policy Update Survey. Yeah, let me, uh, let me just share that real quick. I've got it. We had it on for just a minute, a short time ago. Yeah. Uh, there, are two, there are two pages there. Yeah, I think, I wondered if, Jonathan, what you sent us, is that? So these, are the, these are the survey results. I've, I've got a few things to share. So oh. We've, we've got the survey results that came from the link that Jonathan sent. Um, then I've got Jonathan's uh, what we learned from Livingston Growth Policy Survey essentially for from PPEC. So this is your write up, Jonathan. Yep. Um, and can you actually see that? Yes. Very good. I'll make sure I'm sharing properly. And then um, the other one that is sort of in our input for this is uh, can you see the one from Bill that I have up now? No. Observations? Uh, no. No. Stop share. <laughs> Ugh, this is getting, this is clunky. Um, forgive me. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. That's it. Yeah. So I took, I took what Jonathan sent. I PDF'd it. And now that's, and you can find that in our Google Drive under uh, meeting recordings and minutes under this date. So it's just, I, I included Jonathan's stuff from the website and I included Bill's comments, the, this two page PDF. So okay. what, let me just to yeah, provide. The two most important parts of that, I would say, if you go down to number 12 and number 14, I think those are the two most important parts for us to look at. Um, and Jonathan and I did talk about this a little bit. And this has to do with, um, please indicate the importance of the following policies regarding natural resources. So I think that's in, the ball is in our court on this one. Very important and act appropriate measures to protect, protect, not protest. Okay, I was like, I don't want to what that means. <laughs> huh, huh, huh. <laughs> Got but, it. Um, when you scan through this one and number, 14, if you go to 14 for just a sec. Yeah. Which is importance of infrastructure policies. Uh, the first one being um, that you should promote energy efficiency. 
this certainly falls in our court. And it's something that I think we can pick up on here and say, well, the people that were surveyed, here, here's what they was most popular with them in terms of infrastructure policies was promoting energy efficiency. And we've talked about this already, and I think it's something that um, we need to discuss a little bit if anybody has any comments to make on this, because then coming up is impact fees to pay for upgrade to infrastructure, which could also fall in our area, depending on how you define infrastructure. Did you all get a copy of this? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think everybody got it. I so um so what I what I guess what I hear is that from when I look at this, I see that from from these couple of questions that energy efficiency and conservation um seem to be pretty important. Um and right. And so the question is, how, how do we think that this is going to be translated into, into uh, growth policy language? Uh, and and what, is that, what does that even mean? Because um, that's kind of our goal, is, is, if we're gonna, is if we're gonna provide input to Burton, it's these are actionable you know, things that we wanna see on the growth policy draft when it comes out. Well, I would think so, definitely. I mean, they're the ones which the people, 10% plus of the people who are surveyed, um, be the highest priority to. So uh, whether or not that's an adequate sample to say that that would be what the majority of people would feel the same way, we don't have anything else except this. So we can refer to this, I think, in something we say to the council and or um, that this is what has come up in the report that we feel is very important to be followed up on either by us or whoever we feel it's appropriate to uh, send that information to. Yeah, I so so my question is based on based on this um, on on is there. I think I think that the survey questions stand for themselves in the sense that they communicate a sense of wanting energy efficiency. Uh, but I I pulled up by the way, Jonathan. I um, yours as well. Let me just share that. So in terms of energy efficiency and um, and all of that, do we? I mean, I see this, this, I like this little blurb, just policies should promote energy efficiency and resilience, which is pretty clear, um, and conservation of our natural resources. So th those are good conclusions. Um, uh, I, I, think, I think the question is then, it, do we go any further in our recommendations into what should be put into the growth policy. I think on areas where we can be a little more detailed, yes, and maybe that's not all points. Because some of this is just pretty open-ended, like protecting wildlife. Okay, <laughs> what does that mean? Um, and I don't know that we can be like super detailed, but do we see that as being <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to protect wildlife in Livingston, I, but um, okay, let's say like protecting the Yellowstone River from pollution. So how do we take that and make that more detailed? I would say stormwater runoff and building on the river would be two really great ways to protect the Yellowstone River from and Livingston. your erosion and your planning for things you build near the river. And, and I, what I thought for the wildlife would be fishing and overfishing and then the water temperature though so some of that um there's no reason for us to go where state policies or epa policies or i should say federal policies are already covering them and i'm not saying we should all know what those are right now um i just 
I think we have to think on a really local level and us um, having an impact on say fish population in our city is going to be pretty minimal compared to how our little community um, pollutes the Yellowstone River or um, because it's hard to think like that's a really weird one to think about actually because it's really we're one little tiny dot on the river and this could be said aren't we still like a vacation spot where people come and fish I mean I think what we need to I think what what um Amy's saying is like the city policies are not something that we um I mean, like, we're, we're just focused on city policies at this point. We're not focused on uh, recreation management or anything like that. We're just focused on what the city can do with its own infrastructure and with its own policies to kind of promote this. And I think, I mean, I think the most important question that we should decide is, I mean, do we feel like this conservation board, I know we did at the last meeting, we felt like the conservation board should weigh in, but like, I don't know, do we have the capacity to do that right now? Do we think that this is um, an important thing for us to do? And if so, I mean, I think we can just highlight that it's, I think that, that should we propose specific things or should we just highlight that it's an issue and tell them those things need to be included? So Jonathan, I felt like after our last meeting, you were the most passionate about I responding definitely. to the growth policy. So what's your opinion based on what you just said? I definitely am, was the most passionate. I, um, I would be glad to do it still. I just um, wanted to make sure everyone still feels like it's a good use of our time. And I just, and I felt like I, I feel like I kind of was, I was gonna, I was meant to take up the, um, to take up more of it and like do more work on it. And then I just didn't then. So now I feel like, I just wanted to make sure people thought that it was important still. I guess for me, that would come down to how we feel about what these results say. So and let's, yeah, let's, so I, I've been typing while y'all have been talking. Um, let me share, let me share a, a thought. I'm going to start, I'm going to start spitballing some language here. Oh yeah, that's cool. And oh, mm -hmm. yeah. And I know something that I feel personally invested in and that I saw on the results of that are conserving green spaces and creating them where they, and I don't know, I don't know that you have to put a bullet here, but just spitballing. Yeah. <laughs> um, I spend a lot of time in Bozeman because I work there and that's how I moved to Montana and I really appreciate their trail system and their parks and how interconnected they are and that is something I'd, I think that we have a really good start on here but I think we have the potential to have a big boom in this town and I don't want to lose that with growth so that's something I feel pretty <laughs> strongly about um, and like I said I think we're doing a job and this might fall into the trails and parks and trails or whatever theirs is called, but um, conserving green space and, and providing that for our community. Because I think right now there's a lot of areas that I go running in or something that are, I think they're private property, um, but they have trails that the community uses. And I wonder if we can, I don't know that we need to be actionable on that as a committee since there's a committee for that, but putting our weight behind it may not be a bad idea. I, I agree. Have you seen the map of the trails? Yes. Livingston? Okay. So we do have that much at least done. I think uh, certainly insofar as another group has worked on that too, we could endorse that. Um, and that would give them a little more oomph in what they're trying to do that uh, we are aware of that and, and if any interaction. This brings up the point also of meeting with some of the other boards either informally or uh, in a work session. Um, I attended the tree board meeting and I mentioned that at the tree board meeting that maybe a joint meeting sometime or a working session with them 
would be helpful to both of us so we could find out what their thinking is and what they're doing on some of the things that we're interested in. Uh, we feel it comes under our charge and vice versa. But uh, I, I certainly agree on the trails issue. There's no question about it. And th- they are, I think, looking at extending the trails um, and we may be able to make some input into that and, but we, I think we should give some consideration to some joint board working sessions. Yeah. Um, one thought I have on that that ties more back into our board as opposed to being, say, the trails or parks board is, um, okay, so we, they say in the growth policy, and I imagine most of the people on this board want to protect our river, um, I feel like a lot of what's in Livingston is already developed and I have no intention of, I don't want to think about that right now, but like as development continues on the river, I would love to see that preserved as green space, which is also protecting um, the river from erosion, from being private property, taking it out of the public. Um, Generally, it's not good practice to build things on rivers um, now. And so that's how we could tie it in is like, well, if this land isn't something that we want to be built, can we provide it for the public as a use? Yeah, and so I think that's really that's zoning. Uh, I just, you go ahead, Michael. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. No, it's, I think you and I probably say the same thing. I, I can tell you uh, with a wife that's on the zoning commission. <laughs> Um, that the both the planning board and the zoning commission are working hard on the implications of building in those areas okay. right so um, yeah it's interesting uh, it's interesting trying to maneuver sort of the Venn diagram of what our board's supposed to be doing versus others right um, and there's definitely yeah. there's definitely places that could be interpreted just I, I think could be interpreted as overlap and also probably, you know, anybody that just wants to get into it can get into it. Um, uh, one thing I would say is that uh, just as at our last board meeting, we had, you know, Jim Berg, who's the chair of the, of the zoning commission came and provided quite a bit of input because he's passionate about conservation items. Um, that's a two way street. Um, and I, right. I think, so then, you know, the question is what, but what do we see as our kind of quote responsibility? <laughs> um, I did, I did pull up our, our bylaws just to, as, as something as reference, right. Um, which is just, uh, promote, you know, reduce costs and to promote sustainable growth by implementing energy efficient equipment procedures or systems and incorporate renew renewable energy where feasible. Um, and so uh, a big part of what we kind of our narrow focus is to focus on energy at, you know, energy conservation, material conservation in terms of recycling um, and then, you know, some communication and, and that sort of thing. Um, water does come up. Yeah, I have a hard time just throwing out, and I, sorry, that yeah. was a pretty aggressive term. I don't think you're throwing it out, but I have a hard time saying, oh, this, this board will take care of this. Well, it seems like, and I'm not even saying we should get involved with the other, or, I mean, I like Bill's idea, but I'm not saying we should like step on other boards toes. I, but it seems like with our recommendations for the growth policy, we can maybe be more broad than what we would say we are going to accomplish as a board because we're commenting on the entire future of the town, not just like what we're going to accomplish. And so putting our weight where other boards are also probably weighing in would just be that much more like another vote in that. In yeah, one hundred percent. So let's yeah. So let's 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 talk about water a little bit. Um, uh, let's let's shy away from zoning per se, but I think I think water conservation. Um, uh, and I. 
sorry, because I'm only sharing one window at a time, I'm, I sometimes don't know what exactly you can see. Can you see my We're board? seeing the one you're typing in. Good. So, um, so let's, let's stick to sort of the, let's just talk about what areas we specifically want to provide input into. Um, and, and then, and then, so, so the way I'm kind of structuring this is, this is what we've heard, right? And I, I, I just copied and pasted verbatim some of the stuff from, um, from Jonathan's summary um, that, that seemed to be a good concise sort of uh, summary of, of what, uh, and, and it echoes a lot what Bill had said in a few of his places, which was just, these are, um, we, that, that we think that, uh, I'm looking at this, every single, so at the natural resources policy, we can tell that our citizens care um, a lot about conserving natural resources. I thought that it was important to show that that they we think that infrastructure improvements are need to be paid for by new development, but that policies should promote energy efficiency and resilience. So I think that um, uh, you know we can express that as a board in several ways. Um, I, I know that this is kind of a special one, but it, it has come up so many times that I just wanted to add it in. It's also kind of against the part because it's definitely under our purview and it's hard to disagree with, which is that uh, conservation of our dark, dark skies as we grow is crucial. The policy of the city should be to develop actionable dark sky protocols that are much clearer and based on best practices than our current dark sky regulations. That is, that is something that I think could be in, it translated into very clear growth policy language. Um, I would like to see other bullets here that are in the places that we want to provide comment under those topics that, that provide clear, actionable statements that should go into or provide input to the language and the growth policy. So is, is there something in terms of water conservation? Let me, I'll talk just a little bit more to, to give some, maybe some thoughts about that. For example, um, uh, I'll switch to uh, natural gas. Uh, or I'll actually, I'll do something more universal and not, not controversial. We'll say um, uh, density. We as the conservation board believe that higher density leads to wiser use of natural resources. That's a demonstrated fact, right? That apartment buildings on a per person basis, for example, on one extreme, use energy more efficiently. The individual energy consumption of people in apartment buildings is lower on a per capita basis than people that are living in one acre plots. It just is what it is, right? So I think that as, as you know, that's one thing that we could say that the, if, we, if that's something that we feel wearing our conservation board hats and we feel passionately about that should be on here, which is that we should increase energy that, that for energy conservation reasons, we should, we, that, that higher density uh, in already developed areas is a really important tool in the growth of our community, then we should state that. And I'm gonna propose that we do. Yeah, I was gonna say, why aren't you typing? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> um, couldn't I argue that that's that 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 zoning too? It is, it is, but but actually, I, I'm, I'm glad you said that, Lexi. It is, it is better for it's it's zoning 
so zoning in a higher density way though has its own merit for a bunch of other reasons. We're providing kind of per Amy's point, we're providing a conservation lens and providing more credence to the fact that we need to maintain higher density in our town. So, so or allow that, for it at least. Allow for it, right, or allow for it. Okay. Which I don't, I don't know that, I don't really know what it looks like right now. Um, um, maybe this is too detailed, but for like water conservation and energy conservation, I feel like um, promoting those to the public through like rebates. I don't know how to make that a little more broad. Um, I don't know that Livingston does a lot of that, but I think that really encourages the public to do that, especially with people who maybe don't care as much. <laughs> but if you get 50 bucks back, you're probably going to do it because why not? Um, For energy conservation? Energy conservation and water conservation on a like residential sense. I mean, we definitely want to talk about larger senses too, but a lot of people, a lot of this town is just people's homes. And if, if they get a, a incentive to buy a water conscious toilet over a non water conscious toilet, that will actually promote a lot of water saving. And those are, those things are so easy. Well, Northwestern Energy has like a lot of rebates for a they lot do of different for things. A few things. Um, they have them for water heaters. Um, a lot of communities will do their own. Um, yeah. And Northwestern Energy wouldn't be covering water. I don't think we have a, I don't think we have like a in place mechanism. Yeah, well, they, I mean, they cover some water things when it comes to, like, when it's related to energy, just because I think right, they cover like pumps heater. for wells, which isn't a residential thing, but. Um, I guess I just want to, um, I guess the way to say this would be incentives to promote them within the city, and I think that's something that's fairly easy for the city to do if there's a budget for it. Well, and it could include landscaping, like switching from putting in drip irrigation, maybe part of whales. or I don't know, doing things that small things you can do to re reduce your water bill. <clears throat> so to me, that's just incentives to conserve water on a residential level. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm, I'm trying to run with that a little bit because I want this to be an actionable thing. So if we have a growth policy that states, insert a statement here, and this is, this is by the way, the template we should use for the rest of this precious time we have together. So if we have a growth policy that states uh, water, um, that the city should pursue water policies that promote conservation. What does that actually mean? I think that, it, and we have, there are a bunch of policy mechanisms available, most of them relating to building codes and zoning. Um, I'm talking that, more voluntary. I mean, I think all those are, those are probably more effective, but I just see this as a gap. And I know because I've looked for these things and I can't find them. Yes. <laughs> so, like on a personal level, I'm like, can I get a rebate for a toilet I bought? Um, yeah, okay, okay, hold on. This is important. So, so conservation promotion through uh, utility partnerships. Well, and grants can go into that too, because I know cities will get grants from federal things to give things out like light bulbs, um, low flow faucets. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. So like Bozeman has a toilet rebate program. <laughs> you buy a certain type of thing, you send their receipt. I don't know. I mean, I don't know what the like process is, but 
I don't think it, and then there's a shower head swap and faucet aerators. I'm not saying Bozeman's doing everything right here. I just know that they had that. Um, and I'm, I also be truly believe that most people way overwater their landscaping. So there's a lot to be said there. So I think that can all be tied up into a tidy little thing. And that helps to educate people as well without even, you encourage people with, you know, money <laughs> and then they learn because they read through the programming. So, so, so some, some examples. Um, so I hear, I hear, uh, yeah, low flow, uh, uh, toilets, um, just like really simple stuff. Um, uh, uh, like I'll, I'll try and get you some terminology here. Energy efficiency. Generic vegetation, which takes less water in a landscaping. Yeah. Uh, most people know what that means. Uh, I don't. I'm gonna, I don't love that deer escaping. It's not really something um, that's used as much anymore. Let me look, I'll try and find you something that's. Like native landscaping and zero irrigation landscaping? Well, there's a lot of. Yeah, native would be all right too. It doesn't have to be native. I mean, yeah, it be, um, drought tolerant. But even just switching, like even if you have a lawn, like a green lawn, it's not native. It's not drought tolerant. If you just practice specific yeah. watering practices, it's better than other watering practices. So it doesn't even have to be. I mean, I honestly disagree with that. I'm definitely all for native and drought tolerant. Like, on, there's things uh, to do that are probably not your entire lawn. Because that can help a lot make people water at 5 a.m. Um, well, water practices. Uh, Aerator. Water practices in the home in general, uh, there are a lot of things that can be done. You can turn on the faucet just a little instead of a lot. Uh, there are a whole host of things within the home that you can do to cut down on water usage. But so that's getting more into like, um, well, I guess that'd fall under there. I feel like that's an educational thing. Um, yeah, so, so like I had an energy audit done by Northwestern Energy, right? And and they came back, one, they go around and they will for free replace all of the nozzles on your sink and, to, and they'll turn them to low flow diffusers, right? So that so that you yeah. turn on a sink and it, it's got half the water coming out that it used to, but you don't really notice. Um, they'll do that for free. They'll do the blower door test. So they'll they'll give you an assist, how, how airtight is your home? Uh, they'll give you a, a number, a measured number for that. Um, they'll go around and make recommendations on um, on upgrades for all kinds of things. And so, so I think, Amy, what what you're referring to, which is done in a lot of places now, is there are these partnerships that happen with the local utilities, where cities will turn around and promote reduction in consumption of resources by by using that kind of thing and then and then going and getting funding or providing incentives for um for uh, people to to use less uh by replacing by frankly just caulk and other things you know i mean there's a lot of things that we can do yeah so, and i um yeah but, so you you could put but i i see that when you think about okay, what? How do we how do we wrap that up into a recommendation for a growth policy? I think what you wrote is um, is good. Um, do you want to put energy audits on there? Yeah, that's pretty valuable. Or does that fall under that? Energy, okay, uh, audits uh, and um, and. Uh, uh, I just, I'm, I'm not going to lie, I'm like kind of jaded on some of this stuff, and I just feel like if you give an incentive, I don't think most people like don't, it's not that they are like anti-saving it, it's just either they don't know or they don't care, like they can't put the energy into it. 
And obviously we care because we are here and we signed up for this, but we got to think like on the big scale. And if you give someone an incentive or even just like an educational program, that'll at least change some people. But I feel like, you know, 50 bucks off, that's enough incentive to do something for a lot of people. And this is the perfect place to tell the city to do that. So I, I think this is, I think, I'm, I think that's great. I'm glad you want to say that. I think that also just putting that list is really helpful. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So how are we feeling about this? So I've got, um, I'm trying to, I'm trying to obviously bulletize some things a little bit under major headings. Um, but I, I did feel like, I did feel like this is an actionable thing that yeah. in the growth policy, we would like the city to grow by basically leveraging others. We'd like them to create, to, to grow create, by creating partnerships through utility state and federal uh, programs to, with some of these goals um, mo moving forward. And, and I see that as, as different than, hey, city, you need to go and do X, right? Like this. Like, I, this isn't a partnership. This isn't, hey, city, we want you to have a partnership. This is, hey, city, we think that higher density provides for less energy consumption. We should have a higher density goal in our growth policy. That's a, that's a different heading. Um, so... Um, if we can kind of stick to trying to organize the thoughts then under some of these headings, is there anything, cause I actually have a few for waste that, that are. Well, in our certainly recycling has already started. And I think we need somehow to promote more recycling and we need to make clear from the educational standpoint, what the recycling program is that's going on now. Yes. Because. A serious education. education on recycling would be real good for this community. <laughs> Encouraging residential composting because your food waste is 30% of your garbage. Do you, you mean that on a citywide level, not a personal level, right? No, I think it's on a person. I would love to see it on a city level. Where my um, parents live, they just got, it's granted way bigger than here, but they just started they just add their food waste to their like our equivalent of our green bins. Yeah. It's awesome. They do that in a lot of places, yeah. Yeah. But there are a lot of issues with composting. Um, like what? It could be an issue for the city. Um, there are issues with herbicide carryover. And because we are like, I wouldn't really call I mean, us an ag community, but we're on the edge of it. Not saying. I mean, the reason I'm here, one of the projects is for me to see if the city can do a citywide thing, but having a goal for the town to promote individuals to compost, I mean, if they're learning how to compost, they're going to, like, if they have a garden, they're going to figure out that the herbicides are in there. Like, if they're learning how to make a compost, that will come with it. It's, it's not that simple, and that's the that's the biggest problem is that um, these herbicides that are causing problems are ma mainly used in ag systems, granted, but um, they are available over the counter and they last for years in Montana in the soil and parts per billion will cause issues to susceptible plants, which include um, vegetables and some ornamental plants and then in certain concentrations, trees and shrubs. And I, I can provide a couple publications that my program does on that for work. Um, and so that's something I've actually been pretty interested in is to determine the biggest problem I see with the city composting, even providing the post composting it has now, is it's a huge liability. They have this free compost, and if there's this min minute trace of these herbicides in there, it could wipe out so many gardens in this town and then they get sued. Um, 
it can it's been a huge issue in many communities in the United States since 2010. So I let's let's uh, let's yeah. So I I think um, <laughs> that's pretty detailed, but <laughs> no, no, it, it is. But that's that's fine. I mean, but let's not let's not get too. It's important to go down the path a little bit on all these on all these things because then we kind of know what we're what we're where we. Again, it's really important to see that anything that we are giving advisement on that we have like a step B, step C to it, because otherwise, why are we putting it in the growth policy? So what I'm trying to get to is what's something that we that we can agree on right now would be uh, something that we want that we that we believe that the citizens of this city, not just us, but everybody in the right. city, wants. and based on some of the the stuff from the mm -hmm. policy survey. I think that if the city came up with a citywide industrial composting um, program that included a pickup similar to um, uh, similar to to the compost to it's sim similar to our trash um, that it would that it would just it, that a lot of people would feel very good about that. So I have a question about where our role falls in the feasibility of things. <laughs> um, it, well, it, I don't think we know at this point, so are we just saying what we think people want and then, like I have a little bit of doubt of the feasibility of that. Um, and that's my personal I think opinion, definitely, but I'm like wondering where that falls in here. I think the idea of a growth policy is more aspirational. Right. Um, and then the city commission uh, uses the document to help develop policies and goals and does, uses different parts of that, um, the goals of it to, to, to implement policy. So I think um, it doesn't have to, I mean, so we can I, I don't think it. it has, I think we can say <laughs> what our goals are and then and work toward those. And I don't think they have to necessarily be accomplished within the five years or whatever, so. Right, okay. But I, I do think Michael's right about, it. it's just nice to try and put some actionable ideas in here to help show what that means. Um, one of the things I, I think is that we should comment on is just uh, city infrastructure should be, should keep in mind energy efficiency and resiliency and things like that. Um, that, because I think that's one of the areas that we can actually have the most um, say is because we're a city board and this is and the city actually d can decide how it grows. And so like, I mean, we should keep in the city infrastructure should keep in mind the goals that were laid out by the survey response, I guess is kind of what I was thinking. Yeah, so I'm thinking, I, I'm, I'm glad you're adding that. I think uh, one thing we could add to the growth policy specifically is that the city, that city infrastructure decision making, and so that includes impact assessments from any kind of development, new buildings, anything like that, uh, would, would include an, would just in, include, include a step that evaluates that impact. Um, um, are think, you talking just city property no anything in the city no so specifically and lexi i see your hand so yeah give me a, i'll i'll get to you so the the idea is that for example right now the zoning commission has a questionnaire that uh and jonathan helped me there's a there's a name for this test it was a really big deal when they were trying to figure out the um a uh, couple of rezoning contentious rezoning thing. But the idea, it's this questionnaire that has to get filled out by city personnel about a rezoning decision. And the questionnaire says absolutely nothing about any of these conservation issues. So there's, there's, no, there's no procedural impetus for anybody in the city to consider anything related to energy efficiency, you know, um, uh, whether or, or any kind of impact 
uh, beyond really just safety and some other stuff. I mean, there's, I think one question that says, does it comply with the growth policy? Uh, <laughs> you know, God, that's a horrible one to answer. Yeah. Um, so, so, so the, the question is in our growth policy, there, there really should be an emphasis on, um, on the city needs to have more sophisticated and conservation minded decision making. And that's kind of across the, across the board. Um, uh, so I can say, um, <clears throat> Uh, environmental impact. Um, yeah, Lexi, what do you, I imagine you have something on that topic. Uh, we kind of transferred topics since I raised my hand, but um, a couple notes from the greenhouse gas inventory. We might be able to assume right now in our heads that greenhouse gases, um, the percentage would be analogous to money. So solid waste is 59% of our emissions. Um, so uh, food waste is 22% of our garbage. So any policy that we suggest that reduces any amount of our waste because we transport it so far, that's gonna be a huge reduction. <laughs> and then onto this new topic, well, and then recycling as well. Onto the new topic we're on, the if you ignore the solid waste, the vehicle fleet for the county and the city is 23% of emissions, and the buildings and facilities for both of those are 24% of emissions. Those are, so those are both the higher ones, and then wastewater, which we can't really do anything about now. Um, so making some suggestions on those two, because those are two of the higher ones in the greenhouse gas emissions. Like in Alexis's paper so far, it says like when vehicles are at the end of their lifespan, consider hybrid electric. Um, and then with buildings and facilities, I think the only thing that's done so far has been thinking about LEDs and then there's some discussion on windows, which could help, but there's obviously more that could be done. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, so these, actually this is interesting and I think it's really important that we disambiguate where, what decision-making we're talking about. So there <laughs> are, there are direct decisions that the city can make about say a new building, right? Um, if they're, that the city owns. So that's something that's more direct. You, you know, you want the city to try to make energy efficient decisions, for example. Um, on the acquisition of new cars due to, you know, the impact on emissions, uh, we probably want the city to be evaluating a, a acquisition of electric vehicles, right? Um, and um, yeah, we also should look at life cycle cost analysis for any of the larger items that the city is purchasing. I was thinking that too. <laughs> well, yeah. So, so okay, this is good. Life cycle cost analysis uh, for. Um, for major acquisitions or right. some such thing. Yeah, some things like. Including. Uh, uh, you motor know, vehicle. Vehicles. Right, because in some cases, like a diesel vehicle would make more yeah, sense. So, so, you know, Michael Cardis has mentioned, you know, that he thinks that we could save a lot of money if we, if we were able to switch to natural gas or uh, even electric, uh, you know, garbage trucks and things like that right there's 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 some obvious places and this is this is a place that I have a ton of like just because I'm very interested I have a ton of experience and we'll look at it uh, at the at the time you know later on um, but in terms of the input to growth policy I mean life cycle cost analysis is probably the word um, 
Yeah, we don't want to get like too. I'm thinking a lot of things that get me way into the weeds. <laughs> and so yeah. I think that that like um, focus should be on new acquisitions. I think. And well, the city should should update its life cycle cost analysis um, uh, procedures for major acquisitions, including vehicles, buildings. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, and service equipment. Um, so. Basically, like what you just said, like whenever anything happens with the city that, is, along with everything else, which is a lot of costs, probably they should be considering what is the environmental impact of doing X versus Y or like that should just be part of their decision making. Um, or and, and yeah. maybe greenhouse. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I think anonymous, but I don't know if that's true. I think we should try and um, parse out a little bit the procurement policy for vehicles as a separate thing than like the building city's building policy for its own buildings. Maybe just because um, I feel like those are significantly different. <laughs> I think, so maybe we could have like an overriding bullet that is like, we want the city to include environmental decision-making into what they do and then divide that into like examples of the vehicles, the buildings, um, even replacing, uh, well, that'd be a building. Um, I don't know. I don't know what else will go into that. But. <laughs> Um, just like kind of adding that in as a bullet point, like you said on the um, questionnaire thing, just making sure that that is, it's not that every vehicle needs to be electric, but that they thought, of, they thought through the process of it. Yeah. To, okay. And that makes me feel a lot more comfortable because it's easy to say, Oh, X is better than Y, but when you look at the life cycle of it, it's not necessarily, and that's a lot of things that get lost, I think, sometimes when you're talking about environmental stuff. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, absolutely. It, you know, uh, plastic bags is a perfect example. We could talk for a long exactly. time. Right? Um, <laughs> Maybe we've read the same stuff. <laughs> so, okay. So, um, uh, uh, solid waste uh, reduction. Um, uh reuse um I, what i'm trying to do guys is I, again i'm trying not to get stuck completely in the weeds but i wanted to provide a great policy hook so that we can develop some of these ideas a lot more um and um uh, yeah jonathan i'm trying to figure out how to break out your suggestion where we do vehicles and buildings sort of separate because we could add um okay i have another thing that goes with it and maybe i don't think this is going to help you but <laughs> on my road um last year northwestern was replacing all of the gas lines or something and then the city came through and did something else in the same like on the alley and like across the road they repaved my road four times within like a month. It was stupid. <laughs> so like there was so much waste and they did it wrong multiple times and there was no communication. Um, it was wasteful on a lot of levels, but if we're just gonna talk about conservation, like all of the heavy machinery was out there fit five times. I don't know, I'm exaggerating now. It was a lot though. It was, it was ridiculous. And then they repaved it multiple times. There was um, waste of material. Um, and so that's not really an acquisition. So maybe I'm getting ahead of this, but I, the that's... process of the city and like, they must have permitted that this could happen. And why was Northwestern and the city not talking to reduce costs at the very least, um, but on our terms, the waste. Um, so that would be like a, an operating like their operating procedures need to be updated to think about 
and I don't know what actually happened. Maybe there's like a bunch of miscommunication, whatever. It just seemed really horrible. And it happened on multiple streets, not just mine. Yeah, that looks good. Uh, Thank I you. Think, You're really I good at I had a problem with... <laughs> John. Well, coordination. I think you're talking about coordination between the different uh, aspects of municipality construction. I don't know, something like that. Isn't that what you're referring to, that they haven't coordinated among yes, themselves? Like in, it doesn't need to be that specific. I was just, I can't think of how to phrase that right now, but I think what you're writing looks good that they can't no, just I, like go out and do something and then do it again and then do it again without like thinking. Oh, I just think of the cost is ridiculous, but if it happened on my street and multiple streets on my side of the road, like how many other places did that happen in Livingston and how much well, waste was involved? And if they had thought about that in advance, I feel like they could have consolidated everything that they did. Well, and, so, and, to, and to give them credit, they specifically did on the downtown reworks, right? I, I, I know because I was involved in discussing what the, they ran, they ran new fiber, they ran uh, they ran new electric circuits to to put uh, electric vehicle chargers in at all of the um, right. at all so of the street lamps. They they did all that because they only wanted to tear up the concrete once. Right. Okay. So what's the difference between downtown and my street on the north side? And I would say that public view and maybe the cost of that was significantly more. And this thing they were doing on my street was shared with Northwestern. Um, but to me, that doesn't matter. A waste is a waste. <laughs> so can they take that decision making that they created for the downtown and apply that to everything else they do? And sometimes it's just not going to work out, but we couldn't believe what was happening. It was ridiculous. <laughs> so it makes sense that they did it in that sense to me, and I'm glad that they did that. Um, but maybe we can get that into writing so that that happens with all major infrastructure projects. So, Michael, I think that what my main point was just going to be, I think my issue yeah. is with the word acquisitions. I think invest acquisitions and investments would probably just um, pawn um like upon further review i think that would just solve what i was looking to do okay so yeah so you said jonathan you just thought you know, city you said, you said acquisitions and something investments okay yep uh yeah okay uh Perfect. City should update its life cycle cost analysis procedures for major, major uh, acquisitions and investments, including vehicles, building, um, service equipment, and infrastructure <laughs> to identify and value. <laughs> Boy, that's a handful. That's a mouthful, but I think that actually does. I, I think I've lined up my subjects and verbs uh, properly. Uh, cost to the taxpayer, greenhouse gas emissions, water use reduction, solid waste reduction, uh, uh, reuse of uh, current resources. That's a big bucket, but I think it's important. Um, and uh, and consolidation of project. Mm, that sounds good. <laughs> um, uh, that might be one of those component. dream big things. <laughs> yeah, Lexi. Can you make the view so that you close the page gap so I can see the stuff that's above? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, because I don't. I mean, because you mentioned solid waste right here, and I was looking at my notes, and I just thought of one more thing. Um, should we have a goal to burn less? Because I know we burn a lot of brown waste at the moment. Um, 
clippings and stuff. Mm. That could kind of factor into if there's a more aggressive composting. I didn't know that we really did that, so. Um, yeah. Never mind. Um, it. <laughs> we do. And apparently we have a lot of brown waste and we have to burn sometimes and that's really unfortunate. And I think that plays into a lot of different things like air quality and destroying resources and greenhouse gases. I'm going to, I'm going to eliminate uh, waste burning. Something like that should include a path completely eliminate waste. I think, I think that's a, a reasonable way to. I just wonder, uh, it, do we have like, do you, do any, anyone on this meeting have knowledge of, it might sometimes be a better route than some of the alternatives, especially if it's just green waste. I guess I'm a little. Well, I don't know if that's out, outlaw something, especially, I guess I just don't know. I don't think burning things is always horrible because like people heat and stuff like that, but um, I don't know. What, well, the issue is the uh, landfill is super far away and we aren't composting that efficiently and we're not like we're not that integrative of a system so we're not using all this yard waste as effectively as we could or we're like not valuing as it as a resource and we're burning it for nothing yeah it's kind of interesting that they pick it up if they're just going to do that um well and i mean it's at the transfer station so i think people drop off stuff too Oh yeah, I mean it's allowed. You can go in there and drop off. Yeah. So it's not like, I mean, at this point, I think they just stockpile a lot of stuff, and it's like, we'll figure out what we have to do. I don't know. Yeah, maybe that's something I'll look and I'll just. I don't know. <laughs> I I mean, if if it was like trash burning, that's a little different than um, burning wood. <laughs> so. And I don't, I just don't know the numbers on that. And we don't necessarily have, like, I know some communities have weathered patterns that um, make water, or water quality, uh, make air quality really bad with burning. Um, with our wind, obviously, we don't have that problem as, as in a local sense, not in a greenhouse gas sense. I'm just, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, when I read the growth policy, I don't think there was anything on air quality and it <laughs> seems like probably on a on a larger scale it's good because Montana is pretty sparse and stuff um, but from when my perspective as a pedestrian and a bike rider in town it smells like exhaust fumes and diesel all the time and like the train stuff I don't know just I mean it smells bad so um Oof. Yeah, it's really you fun. sure that's just a little, Michael? What's that? A little back, you, you say. Uh. <laughs> yeah, a little back checking. Little back checking. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if, if you all disagree with me, I, I'm fine with letting that go. I just wanted to make sure that we don't get a, too nuts if that's a valid route for some of our waste. No, I, I, your, your dedication to doing the, the, no, your dedication to doing the thing that, that makes sense, not the thing that we're sitting here armchair conservation, you know, guessing. Well, uh, yeah, I that, just. No, that's, that's, that is our job. That is really important. I, I, I cannot stress how you, how important it is that we hold ourselves accountable to the things that come out of our body. So that's great. Uh, I I wonder 
because this is a draft, we could leave it in there and then yeah. discuss it next time after a little bit of fact checking. Yeah, want. I wrote down a note. And and Lexi, you're saying they're just burning um, natural debris. They're not burning trash. Yeah. I mean, they might be burning trash wherever it ends up, but at least at our location. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't actually know how to learn anything about our landfill. I tried to Google it and I, I, I got nothing because that would be interesting to know because I've also learned that different landfills use different things as coverings. Like I learned from one random person that in New York they use glass for landfill cover, which means it doesn't get recycled, which is a huge bummer. So no, now but I like I'd really like to know how our landfill works. Recycling can be a huge bummer. <laughs> Yeah, it is. Uh, and and that's that, one of the ones. It's kind of better for it to be crushed up than it to go in there like not crushed. Yeah, it's my personal opinion. Look under, the, under the carpet on the bump. Under you, the was it before or after our meeting? Because I, I went to the We Recycle Montana in Four Corners, uh, Belgrade, whatever. Mm. No, I don't know. Well, I, I went there. Oh, I mean, it's great. What did you find out? uh <laughs> how many things i don't know there's a lot of stuff so we will be talking about recycling uh in our schedule so we can we yeah can defer to we know the, the, yeah i have a lot of notes. overarching goal with that at the moment Maybe. so at this point um do we at least mention all of the things that everyone wants to mention or is there anything that needs to be mentioned that we have yet to mention um i feel like last, look at that last bullet it says climate <laughs> that's something we, we need to talk about so that's that's mine what's yours amy oh i was just gonna say i feel like in that survey a lot of people brought up more like native Never mind. I don't have a thought right now. I'll well, let you know if I think of what I'm trying to say. <laughs> yeah, you bet. No problem. Um, uh, I'd like to, to flush out a little bit of this. I kind of abandoned this bullet here, but I think it's important. Um, uh, should My goal of saying that was to make sure the city can't like build something in critical wildlife habitat or in an area that's like important for the river or like or they can't dam the ninth street island channel if they so I, that was what i so i guess that's the type of thing that i was hoping to make sure we put into the growth policy to mm -hmm. um make sure those types of conservation ideals are included so i'm not entirely sure the best way to word that but that's kind of what i'm thinking of I agree, especially for larger development. Well, I guess you said city specific, right? Or, or do you mean across the community? I mean, I know what um, we all think, but. I mean, I'm trying to think of, I guess, with city infrastructure. Yeah, let um, me, I mean, let me take a let me take a stab at that. Hold on. So okay. I agree. I mean, I, I would love to see policy. I know this is probably overstepping our bounds. I would love to see policy that says that we cannot build within a certain distance of the river, wetlands, or nah. Okay, you gotta be careful with that. With the river. Yeah, Amy, you you need to you need to go to the zoning commission meetings and provide. <laughs> well, and no, I, no, I, no, get I, that, I mean, I'm saying. How do we? In addition to here, I'm saying you need to go <laughs> make sure that they have uh, some um some input on that uh i mean i think there, there's federal laws too but obviously that can be corrupted <laughs> so um if we can put it at a community level in a way that and we don't i'm not saying you need to like outline this right here but the the thought behind that is what i think would be nice to outline here and i think that's what jonathan is saying as well is protecting our native landscapes. Lexi, did you have, is it your turn, Lexi? It, it is that came. where your hand is up? Sorry, yeah. I'm not, I wasn't looking at the. I saw her, I don't like to, I don't like to break people's thoughts when they're in the middle of them though. Yeah, Lexi, what's up? 
Um, yeah, I remember after Jonathan mentioned all that with the proposed building on the marsh or wetland, whatever it was. And then in when I read in the growth policy, my notes were that I thought that it said effect on natural environment was really vague. And it seemed like they talked about subdivisions a lot. And I thought that, that might be like too narrow and like maybe there's other types of construction mm -hmm. that we need to make sure we cover. Um, and then like this, and then I'm getting into like water stuff like slopes and stormwater erosion and con contamination to groundwater, surface water, and then did trees we, with deep roots for erosion. Did we? But like, do we need to explain, do we need to have specific words like floodplains, marshes, seasonal water patterns? Like, I don't, I don't know. I, I'm out of my, I mean, the only thing, the only, the only sort of concrete, no pun intended, uh, thing that I know about is paying attention to pervious and impervious uh, surfaces in um, construction and zoning and all that sort of thing. Um, but that relates to rules associated with different zones. What, what I think, what it sounds like people are referring to is that we have a giant river that runs through our city. We like the way that the river goes and we like that the river, uh, that the, we would really appreciate efforts to make sure that stormwater runoff and all that stuff gets managed properly and doesn't contaminate the river. We also would love that we don't build things in a way that that significantly affects the the river, the water, the wildlife, the viewshed, the native landscape. Basically, you know, try to build in harmony with the landscape that we have inherited. I could hold that, but significantly affects is vague. I, but that's yes, it is. Yeah. And, and I mean, and this whole thing's kind of vague. Like, I mean, and like so what we're doing. We're, and that's the problem with growth policies. Honestly, we're in a chicken or egg situation, right? Like, we don't have a. There isn't a proposed. To use Jonathan's example, there isn't a dam that's proposed right now to dam off the Ninth Street Island, right? Um, so, if if there was, we would get into a really crucial citywide debate over whether that's a good thing, bad thing, all that sort of thing. But one of the things that the growth policy is supposed to do is to provide some initial expression of the, of the will of the community. And I think in this case, we're trying to provide some language to that. So what do we put here? Let's, let's, let's tie this bow, let's put a bow on this somehow. I like I like what you said. <laughs> uh, so should promote. Um, like it almost has to be vague to um, encompass future things that we don't know about. Well, instead of like not affect the water and wildlife, could you just say like not negatively affect or prohibit or some negative word? <sighs> I just, okay, so I'm going to be the downer again. <laughs> Um, that could be, well, okay, so we're just, we're just giving our recommendation, so that's okay, um, but on a practical level of how our society is currently working, that feels really restrictive to the point where certain things may not happen, like maybe we don't get a park because of that, or like things that we actually want because it's so restrictive that um, we can't do anything. And I guess from my perspective of my experience is that smaller steps in the right direction can be in the long run a lot more useful than these huge steps because sometimes it takes you back. It's hard to get everyone on board with it and, and hard to do because we don't necessarily have all the technology that we need to make that happen. And we also have limited areas where our town can grow. <laughs> so, sorry, get on my 
I mean, soapbox this, there. Well, well, I do think that. Um, I mean, again, this is an input to Burton, which will come up with a plan, which everyone will then have a chance to comment on, which will then get accepted by the city, which will then help guide policies down the road. So I think um, it's it's for something like this. It's very it's it can be both helpful to. Um, speak aspirationally and also give them like a little I mean, and like put in the like good ways to help reach those goals um so i guess that's kind of i think that i i see what you're saying but i think that um i think that this is gonna be thought about by a lot of people who yeah. i think um have ex more expertise on how to make this a reality why don't you, can you say watershed and maybe in like river and watershed? Because watershed can cover the marshes and yep. estuaries, all those different weird words. Yeah, absolutely. Like, that's a great suggestion. Um, I do have like er, a lot earlier, you asked if there's any more points that we want to discuss. I just have one more when we're ready. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yep. <laughs> um impact to water to river and watershed um uh, so when you say recharging our water source are you because like you know what the low impact developments and bioswales are yes i do that's so so that's actually where i'm getting to that is um so there's a few things that are coming down the line right so once we hit a population of 10,000 people, we have to we have to treat all stormwater runoff. Oh, really? That's hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. so. That's gonna so be a project. It is, and so when when that happens, what do we? Uh, what what is what does that mean in terms of how we grow? And there are different ways to do that. So for example, uh, you can go look, there's been a lot of urban places where they've taken large swaths uh, and they've, they've basically dug a giant pit and they have turned it into a native landscape and it's a stormwater queuing area. And, and what it does is it's, it's, a, it's basically a giant pool that fills up with ridiculous amounts of water when it floods so that you can build a wastewater treatment that is much more scaled for just your normal amount of rain. And then when you have your ridiculous 100 year flood events, you have this giant queuing pit, which by the way, is also being used as a natural landscape park for the city to fill up to, to queue up a bunch of water so that you can guarantee that eventually you're going to treat it because because it drains through the wastewater treatment. So Something like that is much better, I think, and, and in terms of aspirational growth in, and water management is much better than, um, than, than not. Uh, so I, I see that as how do we, how do we uh, recharge our water source? But then the other thing is like when we do grow, if you create a sea of concrete, all of the water, the wastewater runoff, is something now you have to manage. If, if instead you promote growth with impervious sources, yeah. then uh, uh, so not concrete, but I mean even gravel is better than you know that. It it allows the water to percolate down through the ground. It eventually makes it you know and filters through and recharges our, our aquifer, which you know we get our water from wells in this town. Or tie that into the green spaces. <laughs> Right. And so, and it doesn't run into the river. Right. So, so I think there's, there are ways, there are really smart ways to say, we as a city don't want, we know that it's best to conserve by, by doing smart wastewater management practices. And, and maybe, maybe that actually means specifically, we say, you know, uh, uh, smart <laughs> wastewater management practices, you know. Um, so, or, or you could you could probably just say conservation based, or or is always no, it wouldn't all be that way. The, the definition of low impact development is land planning and engineering design approach to manage stormwater runoff as a part of green infrastructure. 
LID emphasizes conservation and the use of on-site natural features to protect water quality. So to break that break that down, Lexi, uh, your um, your point on this because you just just looked up something awesome. What's the do you have a suggestion on something that we can add then to this growth policy input that would articulate that? Well, I'm saying that I think that that word is useful enough to cover a lot of different things that we're all saying right now. Which word? So utilize and encourage low impact developments. I think it's enough. Mm. practices uh, particularly I I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna push back on just using a big blanket word because most people won't be able to someone just reading this document wouldn't really know what that means yeah, yeah. Um, so I'll just say uh, particularly waste water uh, runoff storm water or storm water <laughs> Yeah, that's I don't a different think we want wastewater runoff. <laughs> <laughs> outhouses. We're basically saying we want all outhouses in this town. Um, so particular stormwater runoff management. Um, I'll say. And like that can maybe go with aquifer re recharging, right? Because that's the idea. Uh, aquifer recharge. We recharge, uh, the recharging, and then I'll just say um, uh, specifically um, uh, impervious. I, I want this in here. Does anybody else uh, cover reduction? I, I know that's a little bit more specific, but it, I think it's actionable. No, uh, I like it. If, if people think that it's, it's getting too much in the weeds, that's fine. I can take it out. Um, so growth policy should promote growth in harmony and cons in harmony with <laughs> concert. Come on, that floored uh, with the current natural environment. Considering topics like impact to river and watershed, low impact development practices, particularly stormwater runoff management, recharging, and impervious cover reduction. Is that Okay, is this, is this good enough? You like this? Did that cover enough of what we started this topic with? <laughs> okay. I now, is this, this, is, this is going to be available uh, so that we can cut into it anytime and uh, look at it? Or uh, yeah. how, how are we going to proceed from here with this? Yeah, I'll take I'll take this draft and I'll put a giant draft watermark over it. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll email it out to the board to the uh, to our message board, so you'll get an email with it attached, and then it'll also be in our. Um, I'm actually editing it actively in our uh, in our documents for this meeting, um, but ultimately just to remind us of the process after this is we go from here and we we review this you can go home sleep with it under your pillow you know all that stuff and then ultimately in the next meeting we revisit it we add but but it also gives the public a chance to review the the bulk of what we're going to be saying which is this initial draft then we can we can add edit adjust how we'd like we'll discuss it and then I'd like to actually vote with those edits in that meeting to say, yes, this is something that we're going to set. And then, and then this project is over. Um, our, next, our next meeting is pretty soon, isn't it? Well, not really. Uh, yeah, I'm pulling it up. So, <laughs> um, the 13th. Okay, so we've got like a month. Yeah, I know. I, I'd like to discuss. <laughs> Like to discuss having another one, but we'll 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 talk about that in a second. Let's uh, 
let's let's put a bow on this. We're we're running out of time. Um, I think it looks really good. I'm impressed with this. I very Are first you? topic was just on the aquifer. Say that again, Lexi. My last topic was about the aquifer. So Okay. Yeah. Uh uh yeah. What do we got? Um we need to plan to not tap the aquifer because I've never lived in a place that has wells and stuff. So like is is there a management plan and do we are we managing how much water is down there and how much we're using and, and then that also goes into your 10,000 people thing because the more we want to grow uh we should think about that the water mention the water quality of the aquifer it's <laughs> a good point well yeah so so a little background there's a there's a giant arsenic plume that that yeah that has had the caused the city to have to shut down a couple of wells from diesel dumping from the railroads for a while. Right. So that's a perfect example of managing that. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, I t let's table that if that's okay, Lexi. Mm -hmm. um, I like that suggestion, but I'm not quite sure. I don't have, unless we have something that feels super actionable in terms of language for the growth policy right now, I'd like to, to say management plan. Okay, ground. Uh, um, yeah, that's what we I would have called it when I was working in that field. I mean, I took a groundwater hydrology class, so I did like modeling for groundwater. Yeah. Okay. How about that? Gra growth policy should include a groundwater management plan in line with the conservation and safety goals of the city. Awesome. Let's please. The climate. That's kind of a huge one. <laughs> I know, and we're at we're at six forty eight. So I'd like to, if we can, try to dedicate a little bit of this. Um, I would say, like everything that we've said already, though, is a huge. Like, say we did all that. That's a huge step in the right direction for climate. Air quality is the only thing that we didn't go on. I don't know what to do about it, though. I don't either. Pollution, I guess. I don't, yeah. Oh, air, air yeah, quality? A lot of that's regulated already as far as pollution. Yeah, and, and like, I don't know how much power you have as a city anyway, too. Yeah. I don't yeah. Know. Who, but that's not really what, – what specifically do you want to cover with climate, like reducing greenhouse gases specifically? We'll see. I heard Jonathan. Was that Jonathan that said Michael? I was just going to ask what Amy just asked. Oh. <laughs> okay. I don't know. No. I, I I think uh, I think specifically. Um, actually, I'd be I'd wonder what McCray wants. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, all I have is just notes about green initiative from the last time I met with my teacher, which yeah. was. A long time ago <laughs> and um, I don't know it's a lot of just making green initiative part of the school policy is a big thing so that we can have money for signs and bins yeah um, and just keep green initiative sustainable because it's a pretty small group right now and if like there are some pretty big people in it that take a lot of their own time so if like someone left, it might crumble. So <laughs> it would be nice to have it as an actual club in the school. That's my only. Well, let me let me ask this. Let me ask a more broad question for you. This yeah. Is, so so, for, you know, uh, putting green initiative aside for a second. Yeah. What? How do we want to express? Is there? Is, how do you think we should express climate goals for the city? I mean, it's it's real easy to say we just need to develop a climate action plan um, and, and leave it at that. But are there, you know, I, I, specifically as it relates to climate, are we are we doing are we putting the kind of focus that that you personally think that we should be at the city. 
I know that's a that's a big answer. That's a big question, but uh, I, I, I want to get you. I, I uh, I'm 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 fishing here because I know uh, I I think I think it's important that especially as the youth member of our board mm -hmm. that that your input on how how we address climate issues in the city is is well considered. <laughs> yeah. Um... Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's just, I don't know. I think everything we're doing right now, like setting up this plan is really good. I don't have anything else to add, I don't think. What if our goal was to consider the IPCC Paris thing? Like, not that we necessarily have to have it as our goal, but if we strongly consider it in our decisions. Yeah. I almost wonder if we should keep it as broad as what is just written there. We should develop a climate action plan. I just looked up a couple communities just to see like what does that look like and a lot of it is like a reduction in fossil fuels by 40% by 2033. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's just an example. Um, I just feel like coming up with those numbers would be difficult. So then maybe with the climate action plan, we um, consider international standards, like what you just said with the, the Paris Agreement. I think that's what it's called. Like not up on this, but, and then the and other, then could, um, or the, what is it called? The kite. Kyoto Protocol. Yes, that, thank you. Um, like consider what other, what what is the globe doing <laughs> and then um and we can consider what nearby communities like missoula yeah. has like the zero waste plan and i think they have an energy plan too so globally and more locally at least to montana to show that hey they have this goal like we can do it too or also we can beat them i don't know yeah i i i like that i think you know we we don't need to solve uh we don't need to solve the climate crisis in the growth policy of Livingston, Montana. But, <laughs> but what we what we can do um, is we we need to provide I think a, a a short framework that says this is our intention because um, if it's not in there, it's it's going to be less of a focus. So I I would. I would suggest that we just simply say that the city should develop a, cli a, pli a climate action plan uh, uh, that considers, may and we could even say the goals uh, of the um, global community of the global community. That's great, um, and and then we can leave it at that if we want. I would though. I, I'm going to offer one more suggestion in, under the climate heading though which is that we've talked about life cycle analysis. We've talked about, um, uh, we, we've talked about uh, all kinds of uh, ways that we want the cities to make their decisions. Uh, one of the things that all of the oil majors are doing now is they're building in a ghost price on carbon on their major project uh, uh, cost projections when they decide to say build a new refinery or something like that. So what what does that mean, right? That means that they're anticipating that either through a cap and trade system or a straight up price on carbon or or through measures that promote, you know, I mean, even if you look at something like the Green New Deal or something like that, that more directly impacts. Uh, on the supply or on the demand side, uh, some of these projects, in all those cases, there is effectively a price on carbon. And there are some really clear ways that you can set that you can, when you make decisions, you say, so say you're doing like an energy analysis of a building and you make some assumption that the building is going to cost a certain amount to run for the next 40 years. 
Well, if you use today's energy prices for that decision, you're going to be dead wrong in 20 years. That, building's, that building could cost twice or more that it costs now to, to run because that'll be at the height of a massive changeover in the energy infrastructure from a fossil fuel-based one to, a, to, a, uh, to one that's, that's more renewable. And it doesn't really matter if you believe in climate change or not, <laughs> that some financial consideration putting a cost on carbon only makes smart fiscal sense because of where the, the, the world environment is going. Um, it, 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 it actually doesn't matter whether climate change is a big deal or not. There's enough people that are worried about it that a price on carbon is coming. Right. So I, I think that we should make, and this is, this, is, this is particularly important when, for example, I think when you look long term at the cost of infrastructure and impact to health and a bunch of other stuff, I don't, I don't think we should be running new natural gas lines to any new neighborhoods. There, in fact, uh, Berkeley, California just banned them. You can't, you actually can't get any more natural gas hookups. And that's not because they're, you know, crazy uh, liberals, <laughs> although there, there are a lot of liberals. I'm like, yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but specifically, that just makes smart, thoughtful sense, right? Uh, the, the, in, the incident and the health impact and asthma and a bunch of other stuff on having natural gas running to the house. I mean, there's no, for, forget whether you think climate change is real or not. It, it, the impact to uh, health and safety, to hazards of work on workers, and to cost on developing new buildings uh, is all really big uh, when you require that people run natural gas to their homes. So, I mean, I have an argument, though. No, I don't want to get into it. We don't have enough time for a count, unless okay, it's... Well, could, could you consolidate what all you just said into like what you want to say on here because I'm I'm not sure exactly like where you're going with it <laughs> yeah yeah thank you no that that I would absolutely <laughs> and then maybe we can give you our opinion <laughs> yeah emission and and we sh you know uh so what I what I'm hoping to say is that I want the city to anticipate a caught a price on emission a price on carbon as part of their decision-making moving forward. I think that that's really smart. Okay, because you see that as a way that the future is going to be pricing energy. Yes, okay. I, think, I think that a, uh, 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 so the city well, should- Do you, a, you wanna say like fossil fuel instead of necessarily emit, I mean, they're sort of the same, but like when you're saying natural gas, not that. Well, I think what he's going to write is different than what his yeah, arguments were. To consider increasing costs due to carbon emissions um, uh, for. I'm just saying using non renewable fuels isn't the same thing as the emissions after using them, I guess. Like yeah, the cost it takes me to. You have to be careful about renewable They're different taxes, I guess, or, or whatever. Right. Um, or fossil fuel based uh, costs um, in uh, in life cycle decision making. So what does this look like to you <laughs> in a practical sense? Like, I get what you're saying about Berkeley, except that we aren't southern california in so many ways that so, so basically i'm thinking rural versus urban there so like what what do you see this doing for livingston so what we're gonna do we um need to either vote to extend the meeting oh. or stop it also okay uh does how are we doing i do have a i do have a bedtime no uh, yeah that's fine i don't need my question answered no we let's <laughs> vote so so actually i'll, I'll let's put a motion does anybody have a motion to extend the meeting for 15 minutes to wrap this up? Sure, I move to extend the meeting for 15 minutes. All right, seconded. Anybody? I'll second it. Or did you already second it? <laughs> Everybody say aye. Okay, so we're at 7.15.
Um, so specifically, uh, the city should consider increasing costs due to carbon emissions for fossil fuel based costs. Ooh, gosh, that's a mouthful. Life cycle decision making. And what, what, what I'm saying is that if we're, if we're going to decide to, for example, build a giant rec center, that we better be considering that energy costs are going to go up in the next 20 years significantly as we move to a carbon free power grid and and that that they better not be using sort of a flat power cost profile okay right because that what that does is it is it makes the operational costs seem rosier because we're not considering carbon emissions in the cost of the power right now. Okay. Specifically. And I, I don't want, I don't want my kids to be paying a ridiculous amount of money because they decided to hold off on the $200 more of insulation. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That makes more sense now that you outlined it that way. This wasn't right. sure what that meant. For example, um, uh, so for fossil fuel based resources like energy <laughs> in life cycle decision making. So it almost like to me that bullet like, yeah, it belongs there, but uh, did we, do you think we captured that up in the um, infrastructure decision making? Because to me that's like, okay, we're going to put in this heater for this massive rec center. Let's make sure that it's going to work or that it's going to, I mean, I don't know what heater you'd put in now that like, well, I guess if it was a gas heater or like, how can they make decisions on something that is going to be flexible over the lifetime of the, is that, am I making any sense? <laughs> like if you put in a heater that is gas powered, then you're stuck with that for the life cycle of that heater. Yes. Um, uh, and if he's talking about fossil fuel consume consuming things i would think it goes in the infrastructure bullet now do you mean no, here it goes in both places so as long as we get it in one i don't know i are you talking just about fuel here you're talking about everything the city should consider increasing costs fuel costs energy costs just yeah. increasing cost kind of cost emissions um, so uh, the assumption here is simply that emitting carbon will be more expensive in the future. <laughs> it's very simple. It's just right now, the dollar cost of our energy is based is not based on the carbon emissions. Right. Okay. Very simply. Right. So in the future, that will probably change. Will be, I think you mean will be more expensive in the future, don't you? Yeah, yeah, I definitely do. <laughs> definitely do. Yeah, I, I say let maybe maybe this can be a draft and we'll we'll workshop this a little bit because i i want this to be clear and i don't think this is clear yet no i, I think it's really high level and you might need to bring it down i'm not saying anything about the people reading it i'm just i think that you really understand that and have a lot of thoughts yeah. on that and yeah. if yeah if we don't quite understand what you mean then we might just need to like yeah, no, it out a little more. <laughs> not right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, no question. Um, no question at all. Yeah, it, and this is the same with like you know what I was saying with Lexi on the low impact development practices. I was like, okay, what does that actually mean? And I, I don't think I've done that properly here yet. So I agree. Well, that, and that might be a good thing for us to do before we send this in is make sure that we're not using jargon and that we are explaining ourselves well. <laughs> yes, 100%. That should be the goal, one of our goals. We're, we're not. 
the goal of technical writing is to use the least amount of words, which usually is removing things that are, yeah. I don't know. There's easy ways to explain things in hard things, hard ways. So, so, so this has been quite a two hours, uh, but I think we've gotten a lot out. Um, so if it's okay, guys, I'd like to go ahead and call this initial draft done. And we'll we'll post it as as what we're working on. Um, I'll I'll review it for any like re, you know poorly structured thing uh, before I send it out. But, but then we can we can revisit this at our next meeting. And I I'd actually like to talk about that now. When is our when is our next meeting? It's our next board meeting is May thirteenth. I think that's what's on my calendar. Do we want to have an official board meeting before that? <laughs> I am open to it. I'm open to it. Let me look. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. I guess I'm open to it too. Yeah. I think it would be helpful for just getting this out the door. And I mean, we, it, it, it might be nice to just have it devoted to just getting this done and then make and we can focus on whatever's next. I forget what's next on the list. Dark Sky is what we have. Okay. So we, we've got so so to give us a, to give you an update on where we were versus where we are we had such a good plan together didn't we um and then nothing like a pandemic to ruin it <laughs> uh, so we were supposed to have this one that we're talking talking about scheduling we were supposed to have that last week where we were going to vote on this and then be done with this um and then we were going to start reviewing dark sky ordinance research and and just begin recommendations so we could let's just i'm just going to workshop some ideas on how to manage this we could have a very focused board meeting in they boy we could even we do it in two weeks um but yeah but it wouldn't be a two hour thing. We'd try to limit it to one hour and we'd only, we'd, we'd specifically have it for public comment on what we put together now. So we're, we would publish out this thing. We would all then get to sleep on it a little bit. And then we could create, uh, we could have our public comment time where people are bringing, and then we can just vote on it and be done. And then we meeting adjourned. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, that sounds good to me. Okay. So okay. So, so tentatively, that is on the 29th of April. So, um, so can I get a a motion? Does anybody have a motion on that? I'll, I'll motion for the next board meeting to be April 29th at 5 p.m. <laughs> a second. Okay, seconded. Anybody say any? All eyes. Yes. Uh, one comment on it. I do think that we should try to limit it to an hour. I think that seems like a good idea, just to get make yes. sure people stay enthusiastic. So. Yes, I will limit it. I'll make sure we limit it to an hour. Okay. And uh, I, I know we always have this tension between trying to get work done and then trying to stick to our guns on time. <laughs> uh, and then the the so and then the the agenda for that i for that meeting is very simply to revisit this document and vote on it uh so so please come to that meeting with any input on modifications that you want to have clarifications and of course i'll send out this i'll schedule it with faith and make sure it's noticed and then um uh, and then we'll, we'll keep it to an hour, and then we will continue to have our next regularly scheduled board. <laughs> as well. 
and that's when we were going to talk about the dark skies. Yeah. Okay. I'll just say, like, as of now, Danielle and I have not been able to. Oh. Make so I'll do my best by then. Yeah, I want to be in on that too, but we'll we'll. Uh, so so yeah, we'll we'll all sort of jump, jump out and and talk about that. I uh, did put um something in the Dropbox or the sorry the what's it called <laughs> Google Drive folder. Um, if you. Let me just find where it is. Um, under the dark sky one, it's from a, the International Dark Sky Association, and it's a model lighting ordinance, basically pre-written ordinance that you can borrow. Because I guess I thought this was going to be a little easier when I started researching. I was like, oh man, this is way bigger than I thought. And I got a little overwhelmed, so I didn't get too far, but um, I'm going to revisit that. So if anyone wants to look at that, it's in that folder. Great. A lot of good work's been done, but we'll, we'll, we'll collaborate that on that then between now and then. The, and then. Okay. I think we're done. Good job, everyone. Okay. I move that we adjourn. I second it. <laughs> hey, thanks. This was, I, I know it was a bit of a slog, but we actually, we, we actually got some ideas out. So that's, that feels wonderful. I'm going to go ahead. Yeah, this, this is great. I, I felt bad for not bringing a draft document. Now it, 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 we have a good one. So thank you everyone. Okay. Well, the, so the meeting, the meeting is adjourned. All right. See you next